Man, I am back in East Texas with my good friend George. We've shared a lot from George's place. I like to remind George that he was a non believer. <laughs> non compliant to start non-compliant. with. Non compliant. That's that's that would be accurate. Yeah. That's definitely and and you accurate. can see behind here, I mean it just uh, looks awesome. We were here in May last year, so we're late March, about right. a month earlier or something like that. That's correct. And man, this place is just looking awesome. Just tell you tell me your version of it. Well, we've had enough rain to float the ark. So uh that's unusual for East Texas to have the rain that we have, but it's it just in the last few weeks with the soil temperature uh, going up and it's just everything's growing real well. And what's amazing, I mean, we're getting two inch rains in two hours and, and three inches of rain, you know, we've had six inches of rain all over a weekend. We have no erosion. That's what's amazing. We have no erosion. It's all going in the ground. Grant just pulled up some, uh, some stuff and looked at it. We have wormholes. It smells like potting soil. It's just the soil's alive and it's working, just like you said it was. I just didn't. I just didn't believe. <laughs> you now remind me because I honestly don't remember. In the has this been three years? What have we been doing this now, Four. George? Four years. Uh, have you? I can't remember. Did you put fertilizer first year or no fertilizer? What What are we doing? I here? haven't used. Uh, fertilizer in five years. Five, no yeah. fertilizer in five years. Yeah. No fertilizer, no lime, nothing. Just planting. Just twice plant. a year. Twice a year, every six months. Blends. Planting blends. Planting blends. Plant and, blends. and it's working. It yeah. is. The soil has is, is definitely come alive. You know? I mean, it was white sugar sand in places when yeah. we started. I'm, yeah, when I back. say places, I'm not talking a buggy like acres of white sugar sand. Right, yeah. Um, you know, you can go back and look at the videos that uh, that we started with, and it's it looks nothing like that now. And the only implement I use is a uh, drill and a and a crimper. I did kind of slack off on the crimper, but <laughs> I'm a believer of that now. So tell, tell us why you're believer in crimping now. You have to kill all the vegetation. <laughs> you just have to, and the crimper will do it. I was running a drill through there. And that's the only thing I was doing. It's fast, it's easy. I went from planting 50 acres in 600 hours to 150 acres in 32 hours this past planting season in the fall and without the crimping. But uh, you need to run the crimper, people. Do the program like suggested. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to admit it, but it's true. <laughs> the crimper will uh, allow the you to have a better stand and get rid of all your weeds and it's just get uh, mulch on the ground it gets mulch on the ground it just makes everything uh do like it's supposed to like the good lord meant we're kind of following that you know release process releasing creation's potential that's correct and i like to say if man gets out of the way and kind of me too plays by the rule book so to speak things work out pretty good that's right Go back to doing it his way instead of mine. It always works better. But oh. I, I'm super proud of George. I am. And, and George is a guy that maybe resisted a little more than a lot of people do to start with. And we can obviously tease and have fun. And George and I would talk a good bit. And But he's now, I would, I would go as far as to say he's a soil health evangelist. You believe in it now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I have uh, friends that believe in it too, and and there's there's just, you can't argue the fact that it works because it it is working. Um, this is patch that we uh, always have done a video here. We'll go to another one here in a minute, and that place is spectacular, mm. and it's a lot better than this place. And we never ever had a food plot in that stand ever. And now it's just it's the best one we got. And your timber stands turned around. We're getting one of those sometime. Yep. Turned around. Yep. Had to do some thinning, which is a good thing because the pine you thinned at a lot higher value than the pine market is now. That's right. We we were we, that was good timing there. But you you see out through the woods now. You see all the uh, vegetation that's coming up. And when you ride around with uh, night vision, you'll see you will see deer in the food plots. But you see a lot of deer now because the browse is coming up in the in the in the trees. We thin them down to where you know, like uh, 65, 60 somewhere in there. Yeah, basal and, area. Yeah, basal area, and uh, 
the deer are out there and they have their head down, they're walking, they're all eating. One of the most amazing things, and this is not part of what we're doing. I don't understand it, but George was night vision because you used to have a huge hog problem. Big time. I mean, well, yeah. You, um, it wasn't any big deal for you to ride around and kill 20 or 30 or more. Oh, yeah, more. Yeah, and yeah. trap, shoot in trap. Yeah. And you're not having a hog problem now. We don't have a hog problem. I, and I don't know why that is. I'm not taking any credit. I don't know why. It's a blessing. It is. I'm kind of sad because I like to hunt hogs. I'm a hog hypocrite. I want George to have them, but I don't want them at my place. But no, we we spent a lot of money on our rifles and scopes to shoot <laughs> hogs, and now we don't have the hogs. So yeah, yeah. I think it's a combination between the thinning of the trees. Um, I think uh, the coats have worked on them too, and uh, we're working on the coats. So uh, the deer are flourishing. They're doing well. Yeah, awesome. Well, let's go look at another place. All right, let's go.